Welcome to another episode of Solve It with Sir Jude. Today we are going to discuss about simplifying radical expressions. To be specific, we are going to use the laws of radicals in order for us to simplify radical expressions. So let us have some techniques na pwede natin magamit when we are simplifying radical expressions. So ito ay two parts. The first part will be simplifying the the root of a number and then the other one is for variables. Let us have simplify square root of 16. Since 16 is a perfect square, we can already say that the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Same way the square root of 144. The square root of 144 is 12. But how about if we are going to have a square root of 50? How are we going to get or simplify the radical expression given? So, meron tayong tinatawag na prime factorization method. Ito yung actually tinuturo ko sa aking mga studyante. This is an alternative way on how are we going to simplify the root of a number or a variable. So, halimbawa 50, let us get the prime factorization. So, the factors of 50 will be 25 times 2. And then, 25 is still composite. So, we can still factor it. So, the factors will be 5 times 5. So therefore, the prime factorization of square root of 50 will be square root of 2 times 5 times 5. Then we need to consider the index. So the index here is 2. Since it is 2, we need to consider two factors at a time. Hanap tayo ng dalawang factors na magkapareha since the index is 2. So there it is, we have 5. So kung ano man yung napili natin, or kung sino man yung may kapair, ilalabas natin siya. So therefore, that will be 5. Since si 2 ay walang kapares, therefore, ma mananatili siya sa loob ng radical symbol. So therefore, the square root of 50 is simply 5 square root of 2. There is another way wherein iisip ka ng isang factor ni 50 wherein it is a perfect square. So in this instance, we have 25 and 2. Then get the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. While square root of 2, since it is not a perfect square, it will remain square root of 2. Parehas pa rin naman yung magiging sagot niya. So let us proceed with another example. Simplify cube root of 27. This time cube root of 27. And it is a perfect cube. How about kung hindi mo maalala kung ano ang cube root ni 27? So let us apply prime factorization. So the factors of 27, so that will be 9 times 3. Since 9 is a composite number, pwede pa natin siya i-factor. So, the factors will be 3 times 3 times 3. So, this will be the prime factorization of 27. So, the cube root of 27 is just equal to the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3. This time, we need to consider the index. The index is 3. Kanina 2, dito 3. So, at this point, kailangan natin i-consider 3 factors at a time. Kailangan tatlong magkakaparehas na factor. And if you can see, yung 3, tatlong magkakaparehas na factor. So, ilabas natin si 3. So, meron pa bang natira sa loob? So, wala nang natira sa loob. So, therefore, ang sagot will be 3 alone. So, therefore, the cube root of 27 is 3. How about if we are going to simplify cube root of 24? So, let us have the prime factorization. So, the factors of 24. For this example, let us use 3 and 8. So, 8 is composite. So, let us have the factors. Continue natin yung prime factorization. So, that will be 4 times 2. Then, this 4, pwede pa siyang i-factor as 2 times 2. So, what will be the prime factorization of 24? That will be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So, therefore, cube root of 24 is just equal to the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Again, we need to consider the index kasi doon nakabase kung ilan yung i-consider natin na factor. So, in this case, we will be choosing 3 factors at a time. Okay? So, tatlong magkakapareha. So, that will be 2. Kung ano yung tatlong magkakapareha sa it, ilabas natin. Then, si 3, kung mapapansin natin, wala siyang kaparehas. So, therefore, that will remain inside the radical symbol, the cube root symbol. So, therefore, this is already the simplest form of cube root of 24, which is 2 cube root of 3. So, let us now go in simplifying the root of a variable. Let us have the square root of x raised to 6. So, what will be the easiest technique? So, we need to divide this exponent in the radical by the index. So, 6 divided by 2. So, that will be 
3. So therefore, the square root of x raised to 6 is x cubed. Next, how about y raised to 12? Ganun din, divide natin yung exponent ni radical sa index. So 12 divided by 2, so that will be 6. So therefore, square root of y raised to 12 is just y raised to 6. Next, cube root of a raised to 15. So 15, the exponent of the radical divided by the index, so that will be 3. 15 divided by 3, we have 5. So therefore, it will be a raised to 5. How about the fourth root of b raised to 4? So 4, the, the exponent of the radical divided by the index, which is 4. So 4 divided by 4, that will be 1. So therefore, the fourth root of b raised to 4 is equal to b raised to 1. But this b raised to 1 can still be simplified as b. How about the ninth root of m raised to 81? So same process, 81, the exponent of the radical divided by the index. 81 divided by 9, that will be 9. So therefore, the simplest form will be m raised to 9. So next, how about kung hindi exacto? The quotient is not exact. For example, we have the square root of x raised to 5. So 5 divided by 2. So ilang 2 meron sa 5, so that will be 2 remainder 1. So yung 2 rito, the quotient, will be the exponent of x outside. So, ilalabas na natin yon. Then, itong remainder na to, ibig sabihin, may matitirang isang x doon sa loob ng radical symbol. So, therefore, that will be x squared is square root of x raised to 1. And we all know, x raised to 1 is simply x. So, therefore, if we are going to simplify this further, that will just be x squared is square root of x. Okay? So, next. So, parehas pa rin ang proseso, we just need to divide. The exponent of the radical by the index. How about this one? Square root of a raised to 9. So, same process i-divide natin. 9 divided by 2. So, that will be 4 remainder 1. So, yung 4 dito, that will be the exponent of a doon sa labas. At meron tayong natira. Remainder nga. So, natira sa loob na isa. Okay? So, therefore, that will be a raised to 4 square root of a raised to 1. Simplifying this further, we now have a raised to 4 square root of a. So next, the cube root of x raised to 5. So dividing 5 and 3, 5 divided by 3, that will be 1 remainder 2. So meron tayong x raised to 1 sa labas. And then ilan yung matitira sa loob ng cube root? So that will be 2 since the remainder is 2. So we now have x raised to 1 cube root of x squared. Then, Simplifying this further, we now have x cube root of x squared. So let us now go to the loss of radicals. So the, the loss of radicals, we have two. The first one is the product rule of radicals. So for any real numbers a and b, we can say that the nth root of a times the nth root of b is just equal to the nth root of a, b. Okay? So yung magkaliwalay pagsasamahin natin provided that the indices are the same. Pwede rin siyang magkasama pag hihiwalayin natin. So, we will be having the application of that later. So, just take note, if n is even, a and b must be positive. On the other hand, if n is odd, a and b can be positive or negative. So, remember that we cannot get the, the root of a negative number if the index is an even number. So, next, let us have multiply and simplify square root of 2 times square root of 5. Since parehas ng index, we can multiply. How are we going to multiply? Using the product rule of radicals, pagsamahin natin silang dalawa. So, we now have square root of 2 times 5. 2 times 5, that will be 10. So, we have square root of 10. Since 10 is not a perfect square, so therefore, the final answer will be square root of 10. So, next, number 2. Multiply and simplify square root of 11x times square root of 2x. So, same process using the product rule of radicals. Pagsamahin natin yung dalawa. So, we now have square root of 11x times 2x. So, 11 times 2, that will be 22. So, nasa loob pa rin sila ng square root. Then, x times x, applying the loss of exponent when we are multiplying. Same basis, we need to add the exponent. So, 1 plus 1, that will be 2. That's why we have x squared. So next, paghiwalayin natin ulit para mas masimplify natin. 
C squared of 22 is already in its simplest form since 22 is not a perfect square. So, ayan na, using the converse of the product rule of radicals. So, next, the square root of x squared, how are we going to simplify? Katulad ng ginawa natin kanina, i-divide natin yung exponent ni radical doon si index. So, that will be 2 divided by 2, that will be 1. Or simply, x. So, therefore, the final answer will be x square root of 22. So, remember na kapag na-extract na natin yung root ng isang number or ng variable, hindi na tayo maglalagay ng square root. Yun kasi ang common mistakes ng iba na kapag ka na-extract na, nilalagyan pa nila ng square root. So, nagiging redundant. So, let us have another example. Square root of 10x cubed times square root of 10x raised to 5. In this case, let us use again the product rule of radicals. So, pagsamahin natin sa ipisang radical symbol. So, 10x cubed times 10x raised to 5. 10 times 10, that will be 100. And then, applying the loss of exponent, the product rule, we copy the same base x, then add the exponent. So, 3 plus 5, that will be 8. Then, paghiwalayan natin using the converse of the product rule, so we can simplify easily. So, the square root of 100 is 10. How about square root of x raised to 8? So, ganun din gagawin natin. The exponent of the radical divided by the index. So, 8 divided by 2, that will be 4. So, therefore, we now have 10x raised to 4. Let us have the last example. Simplify the cube root of 27, x raised to 6, y raised to 9. Actually, pwede mo na siyang idiretso dito na isimplify, pero let us use the converse of the product rule of radicals para hindi tayo malito. Paghiwahiwalayin natin. So, the cube root of 27 times the cube root of x raised to 6 times the cube root of y raised to 9. The cube root of 27, we already solved it a while ago. It is a perfect cube. It is 3 times cube root of x raised to 6, that will be x squared. Then, cube root of y raised to 9, that will be y cubed. Again, nag-divide lang tayo ng radicand and index. So, multiplying the expressions, we now have 3x squared y cubed. So, iyon yung purpose ng product rule of radicals. Pwede yung pagsamahin kapag nagmamultiply at the same time, pwede rin paghiwalayin using the converse of the product rule. So, let us now go to the second rule of radical or loss of radical. And that is what do we call as the quotient rule of radicals. So, for any real numbers A and B, and B should not be equal to 0, we now have the entropy of A over the entropy of B is equal to the entropy of A over B. So, parehas lang din. Magkahiwalay, pagsasamahin sa isang radical symbol using the operation division. So, parehas din kapag converse naman, magkasama, pwedeng paghiwalayin. So, same restriction, if n is even, a and b must be positive. If n is odd, a and b can be positive or negative. So, let us have some examples. Let us divide the square root of 75 divided by square root of 3. Using the quotient rule of radicals, we can now have the square root of 75 over 3. Okay? Pinagsama na natin siya kasi pwede pa itong masimplify. So, 75 divided by 3, that will be 25. So, we now have a square root of 25. A square root of 25 is 5. So, therefore, the answer is 5. So, wala din sa magkahiwalay, pinagsama, masimplify. So, next, let us divide this one. So, pagsamahin natin, so that will now be a square root of 3a over 27a raised to 7. That is using the quotient rule of radicals. And if you can see, pwede tayong mag-cancel dito. Pwede, pwede natin isimplify. Si 3 at si 27, both are divisible by 3. So, this will now have 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 27 divided by 3, that will be 9. Same with A. So, bawasan lang natin si A raised to 7 ng isa kasi A raised to 1 ito. Tama ba? So, this will become 1. And this will now be A raised to 6. 1 times 1 is 1. 9 times a raised to 6 is 9a raised to 6. That is using the loss of exponents. So let us now have this expression. Simplify pa natin. Using the converse of the quotient rule, paghiwalayin natin yung numerator and denominator. And the product rules of radicals, etong namang nasa denominator, paghiwalayin din natin. So we now have this expression. Pulin natin yung square root ni 1. The square root of 1 is 1.
How about the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. How about the square root of a raised to 6? So that will be a cubed. So therefore, the final answer is 1 over 3 a cubed. Pwede natin gamitin ito wherein pinaghiwahiwalay natin yung mga expressions para hindi tayo malito. Pero dito pa lang sa expression na to, pwede na tayong mag-simplify. Pwede na tayong agad mag-hop to 1 over 3a. So let us now proceed with another example, this one. So pagsamahin ulit natin sa iisang radical sign. So we now have square root of 44a squared b all over 11b raised to 7c raised to so that is using the quotient rule of radicals. Ang gawin natin is simplify natin. Si 44 and 11, both are divisible by 11. So this will now become 4 and this will be 1. Next, sino pa ang pwedeng i-cancel? Si B. Tama. So bawasan natin ng isang B, si B raised to 7, since ang numerator ay B raised to 1. So this will become 1 at ang denominator will be B raised to 6. Ngayon, i-multiply natin. 4 times a squared times 1 is 4a squared. 1 times b raised to 6 times c raised to 4. We now have b raised to 6, c raised to 4. That is why we have square root of 4a squared over b raised to 6, c raised to 4. We can still simplify this one. Let us apply the converse of the quotient and product rules of radicals. pag natin sila. There. So the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of a squared is a over the square root of b raised to 6 is b cubed, correct? And then the square root of c raised to 4 is c squared. So therefore, the final answer will be 2a over b cubed c squared. So that is the main concept of uh, the, the loss of radicals. Pwede mong gamitin si product and quotient rule of radicals when we are simplifying radical expressions. Mula dun sa magkahiwalay, pwedeng pagsamahin. At the same time, using the converse, mula dun sa magkasama, pwedeng paghiwalayin. Using the operations, division, and multiplication. So if you've learned something for today, do not forget to like this video, share this video, and hit the notification bell for more video lesson. At kung bago ka sa ating channel, please subscribe to our channel. So this is Sir Jude. Good day.